In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use top light in your product photography. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to show you how to use top light in your product photography to take it up a notch from the standard white background uh, product photography that we're all used to. Uh, I made a video a while back on how to get those type of photos, but if you just wanna race it up a notch, uh, then this video hopefully is going to help you to do that. Now, one of the reasons that I like this type of lighting uh, a little bit better than the white background stuff is that typically with this sort of lighting, you're using a darker background. In this case, we're going to shoot against a black background. And so when you do that, the brightest thing in the picture is going to be the product, which makes it really pop out and stand out from the photo. Okay, so the lighting itself is very easy, but let's, uh, let's talk about it for a second and then we can, uh, we can cover off the equipment and what you need in order to be able to do this. Um, I'm using a softbox in here, and the idea is to place the light above the product. I'm using uh, this microphone here. This is going to be the product we're gonna shoot. Uh, and then after we shoot this product, I'm gonna swap it out with different products. So I've got a, a can of deodorant here as well, and I've got a baseball hat. We'll shoot all those products as well. And I'm gonna show you what all those, uh, all the images will come up on the screen. But let's concentrate on this one for now. Um, so the idea is that you want your light to be above the product and I'm in a very small room in here typically I like to have the background a little bit further back but I'm shooting here in my office um, so this is what I've got to work with and the the I guess the modifications that we're going to do with the light is we want to uh, basically move the light back and forth okay so the further we bring that away from the background the less light that that's going to spill on the background making it to making it go darker uh, and also you're going to get a little bit more frontal uh, light on the product as well um, also because the light is above it makes it ideal for bouncing back into into the product using very very small cards um, I've got just a piece of paper that I'm using because the light is coming straight down it's very efficient when, when you bounce light back in there so you can be very very accurate uh, so you can bring a little bit more light down the bottom as well so uh, a really nice uh, lighting setup and I think once we get some images you'll understand why I like this so much Okay, so equipment wise, you can do this with, um, with just about anything. I'm using uh, a mono block in here, just a strobe light, but you don't need to use a strobe. Um, you, can, uh, you can do this with just a speed light and an umbrella. If you are going to use an umbrella, I would recommend getting a shoot through umbrella, sort of facing downwards, so you've got the curved side down. So you shoot through the umbrella and get one of the umbrellas with a back cover as well. Otherwise, what will happen is with a shoot through umbrella, um, half of the light will go through the umbrella, the other half will uh, bounce back up, illuminating the ceiling, which could cause a little bit of spill, uh, making it more difficult to uh, control the lighting. So if you're going to do that, uh, make sure that you get an umbrella with a cover on the back. I'll put a description on the one that I use. Um, today I'm using the softbox, but you, like I said, you can use an umbrella. Um, and um, and obviously you're going to need some some way to control your flash as well. But you can use this. Uh, you can use a speed light if you like. I'm just using this because this is what I've got. Okay. So the camera settings. I'm shooting at one sixtieth of a second, and I do that because I don't want to register any of the ambient light in the room. And I'm shooting at f20 because that gives me the depth of field that looks nicest. I think with this type of product, um, it's the whole thing is not going to be in focus. But I don't want that. Um, otherwise, I'd use maybe focus stacking, but in this case, yeah, the front half of it of the product is going to be pretty much in focus, and then just a little bit of blurriness in the back. Um, but you'll still be able to tell what it is. So that's what I'm using uh, for this. I'm tethered into into um, into Lightroom here, and uh, so we're going to fire off a couple of shots and let's see what that looks like. Okay, so I really like the look of that. I do think that it is a tad bit um, dark underneath the microphone but the mesh up on the top looks amazing i think and the contrast between that and the background looks fantastic so um but the background is a, or the bottom part of the microphone is a little dark so i would like to bring that up just a little bit now i could do this in uh, lightroom or photoshop or i could bring up the power of the lights or i could open up my f-stop uh, there's a lot of things that I could do, but all of those things are global changes. It's going to affect the whole photograph, right? So if I bring up the power of the light, then the whole microphone is going to be brighter, and I don't want that. It also will bring up uh, it, it'll bring up the 
uh, the background as well. It'll make that a little bit brighter, which again, I don't want that. So instead, what I'm going to use is just a little bit of paper, and I'm just going to bounce a little bit of light back into the microphone. Uh, apologies if you can hear the fan, that's uh, the fan from the light that's kicked in. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place this underneath the microphone. Um, and this is going to be very efficient because the light's coming straight down and it's going to bounce onto that bit of paper and just illuminate the bottom. So I'm going to hold it quite low, I think. I'm going to shoot another shot. And I think that that is spot on. You can tell what it is. Um, and you can see detail in there, but it, it's definitely still dark, but it, it should be darker. And I think that this is spot on and I'm happy with the way that this looks. Uh, I don't think I need to go any further with this. So uh, obviously I need to go in there and do a little bit of editing, uh, clean up. Uh, there's some dust on it because it's not a new microphone and fix up things like the white balance. But uh, generally speaking, I'm happy with the way that this shot looks. So let's swap out the product now and uh, we'll, uh, we'll leave everything as it is, but we're just gonna swap the product. Okay, so I've switched over the product. I've got the hat on there now and I haven't changed anything with the lighting or the camera. So I'm just gonna take a shot now and we'll see what that looks like. And as you can see, it's again, it's a really nice lighting. Uh, the hat is black though, so it's gonna be lost against the background. So what I should do in here is, uh, I need to bring the whole image up. So I'm gonna do that by uh, increasing the power of the light and uh, we'll see how that goes. So let's go a full stop. Okay. Okay, and again, it's a, it's a really nice, very, very soft light. I think I could probably go up a little higher than that. Uh, let's go up half a stop. We'll see how that goes. Great, I think that that looks pretty good. Obviously, this is not styled. This is my hat. It's lost a bit of shape. I would have to go in there and, uh, you know, clip the sides uh, that you can see in there. But I think you get the idea of how the light uh, behaves on a product. Again, you know, so d don't look so much at the product itself. Look at the, what the light is doing for the product and imagine what your product will look like on there. Okay, so um, let's switch over to the. Uh, aerosol can the deodorant and I want to show you something really cool that you could do with this All right, so what I've done now is I've changed over to the aerosol can the, uh, the deodorant can and uh, Other than that I haven't changed anything. So the light is the same the camera is the same The only thing that I did is I put this um, Apple box just to bring the product up a little higher, but other, other than that I haven't changed anything. So let's take a shot now See what that looks like And that looks really nice. I like the front of the product um, It's I think it's lit very well uh, the one thing is that because the sides or the top of, of the can is black, it is getting lost against the background just a little bit. And this is something that you normally, you probably wouldn't, you, you may light it a little bit different or bring in a couple of extra lights to light that side. But, um, but what I want to show you is a way to fix this um, and do it with, without having to put in any other lights. Um, or, uh, or change the light. So we're gonna keep everything exactly the way it is. But what we're gonna do is I am going to introduce um, these. So what these are, are, this is just a gradient that I created in Photoshop um, and I printed it out and then just stuck it onto a piece of plastic. Um, you can stick this onto anything you want. And what we're gonna do is we're going to, um, we're going to put this to the side of the product with the understanding that the product itself is semi-reflective. Um, and so it's going to reflect whatever is on the side of it. So with this gradient, we can control how much of that reflection, how much of it is white or gray or completely black. Well, obviously we don't want black, we've already got black, but we want to introduce a little bit of a reflection in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to prop these up uh, onto the side of the product. I'm going to, I'm going to take another shot and see what that looks like. Okay, so I'm not sure if you can see that. Uh, what I've done is I've placed the two uh, reflective boards on either side, and hopefully what that's going to do is uh, reflect a little bit of that white onto the uh, onto the can itself, onto the uh, uh, onto the reflective material here in the white section, and it's going to bring uh, or it's going to introduce a couple of little sort of lines down the side. So let me take a shot and I'll show you what I mean. 
Okay, so I don't have the boards in the exact spot that I need them. I need to push them back a little bit because uh, it's not throwing enough light onto the cans. So let's move them a little bit further back. And obviously this is something that you would remove in Photoshop afterwards in your editing. So let's give that another try. So they're a little bit further back now. Let's give it another go and... Okay, and that's worked really nicely. So you can tell now, definitely see where the edges of the can uh, are, uh, whereas before you couldn't see it at all because it was blending into that background. So that is a quick and easy way that you can actually introduce some really nice uh, reflect reflections onto the side of the can so that it, it stands out from the background. Much like in, uh, in portraits, how we have a hair light. If you've got uh, dark haired people onto a dark background, uh, the hair usually gets lost with the background. You're doing the same thing except without having to use a light. So uh, obviously you could use a light. If you wanted to, you could put two strip banks onto the side, but that's just more work that you can easily uh, sometimes overcome by doing something as simple as this. So this again, is just a, a simple gradient that I created in Photoshop. Um, if you don't know how to create one of these, um, what I'll do is I'll put a couple of JPEGs, I'll put them in the description and you'll be able to download them um, and, uh, and just print them out yourself. You can stick them onto a bit of cardboard or in my case, I've just got them onto a bit of uh, plastic and, uh, and then they, they're really, really handy uh, to, to use in situations such as this. You can actually print these or make your, make these in different colors as well. So, which is it's why it's not permanently mounted. I've just put a little um, blue tack on there, sticky tack in there, and uh, and I can just throw this away and print new ones in there. So uh, that is a nice and easy way. And you can also move this back and forth to really change the effect, uh, the reflection. Obviously, if you bring it up forward or, or you bring it up uh, forward, you're going to get um, less reflection from this area here. The idea is to try and just play around with it and get the reflection that you like. So guys, that's it. Hopefully you found this useful. If you did like this video, please don't forget to give the video a like. It makes a massive difference to me and to the channel because it just shows me that I'm making the kind of videos that you enjoyed watching. So if you did like it, please give the video a like. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I make videos like this to help you with your photography uh, on a weekly basis. I put at least one or two videos out. So if you don't want to miss out on any of those, click the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you'll be notified when I upload a new video. Finally, don't forget to check out ministryofphoto.com. That's where you're going to find links to all of my videos as well as tutorials. Uh, there's blogs, there's articles, reviews, as well as some freebies that you can download. It's completely free, so make sure you check it out. That's ministryofphoto.com. So guys, that's everything from me. I want to thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.